Okay, sixth graders, it is now April 29th, and uh, we are on day three, four, and five. Oop, four, five, and one. Sorry. However, we do have to finish with three. I realized after I published that video that I only did one problem on day three. We didn't do these. So um, you may have um, <clears throat> done them already through Mr. Gregory's video, but I'll go ahead and go over it. So it says, which one doesn't belong? Choose a number in this picture that you don't think belongs with the rest. Explain why. Can you pick another number and give a different reason? Okay, so all you have to do is pick a number and tell why it doesn't fit in that particular square or set of squares. All right, and then number four, or not number four, the next problem, word problem, it says the daily recommended allowance of vitamin C for a sixth grader is 45 milligrams. One orange has about 75% of the recommended daily allowance of vitamin C. How many milligrams are in one orange? If you get stuck, consider using the double line, double number line. All right, let me explain to you how we do this, okay? So, this one, two, three, four to get to 45. So it's not by fives or by 15 or by 20s. I mean, so we have to find out. So one, two, three, four. So we're going to take 45 and divide it by four spaces. All right. And we get four goes into four once. One times four is four. This is going to take a little bit. All right. I should have moved up a little bit longer. Higher. How many fours are in five? One. One times four is four. Five took away four is one. We have to, oops, put a decimal point here. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. All right, we have to put a decimal point here and add a couple zeros. So bring this decimal point up. Bring down a zero. How many fours are in 10? Two. Okay. Two times four is eight. 10 take away it is two. And bring down our zero. And how many fours are in 25? So we find out that this is divided by 11.25. Okay, so 11.25. And then another 11.25 equals 22.50. And then if you add 11.25 to that, you get 33.75. If you add 11.25 to that, you get 45. Okay, so that's how we get our numbers here. And this represents um, the number of milligrams in, let's see, the daily recommended allowance of uh, vitamin C for a sixth grader is 45 milligrams. All right, so this is how many milligrams of vitamin C a sixth grader should have. So 45 milligrams is what a sixth grader you guys should have. Okay, one orange has about 75% of the recommended daily allowance of vitamin C. So down here, this is the percentage of recommended allowance. So this is 100%, it's divided into fours, so it's 25%. 50%, 75%, 100%, okay? All right, so how many milligrams are in one orange? Okay, so you go over here, it says one orange is 75%. So then we just go up here where they match, 75. So this is where we know that one orange equals 33.75 milligrams of vitamin C. Okay, hope that helps you. All right, so that was day three. Let's move on to day four, because we have four, five, and one to do today. Week two, one. All right, I'm going to move our paper up, and that will get rid of that, though. Okay, so day four, percent problems. There are 90 kids in the band. 20% of the kids own their own instruments and the rest rent them. All right, so how many kids own their own instruments? 
Okay, so we have to change 20%, oh boy, hold on, 20% to, oops, a decimal, okay? Remember, you take the, the percent sign off, and the decimal point is here. We move it over this way. So 20% as a decimal is point to zero or even you can say, well, we'll say 0 0.20, so I don't confuse you. Okay, now, how many kids own their own instruments? So you're going to take 90, oops, times 20%, but we're going to do it as a decimal, okay, 0 0.20, I should have put that point down here more, sorry. All right, so we've got 0 times 0 is 0, 0 times 9 is 0, 0 times 2, it should be in a column. I'm not doing a very good job of this with this marker. 2 times 9 is 18. And then we add these. We get 0, oh my goodness, 0, 8, and 1. So 20% of this, oops, hold on. Now wait, we're not done. We have to go back up here and it's one, two decimal point. So we come down here, one, two decimal point. Okay, so we don't need these zeros. So we find out that 18 kids own their own instruments. Now, you can do the rest of these. I'll just hint that if 20% um, <clears throat> own their instruments, what's left? 20% plus what percent equals 100%? Or what's 100 take away 20? And that'll tell you how many kids, that'll tell you the percentage of kids. So you could do 90 times 0 0.80 to find the answer, or since you know that it's 90 to kid, 90 kids, you could just subtract 90, take away 18. I'm giving you lots of hints today. Okay, and that will give you the number of kids that rented. And now they want to know which percentage. And I just told you that um, if 20 plus what equals 100. So how many kids rented? That would be 80%. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to leave you to find out what 80% of 90 is by subtracting these numbers. All right, we're going to move the paper up now to the next one. All right, so let's look. Uh, got to get rid of this. Okay. All right, one big factor family. Oh, that's what it's called, one big factor family. Imagine that each number has a family. Its children are its factors that are not equal to itself. Some numbers have grandchildren and great-grandchildren. There are four ones in the eights family. How many ones are in the 72's family? Okay. Okay, guys, I'm going to skip that previous problem about the factor family for right now. I'm going to have to consult with Mr. Gregory on that one because that one doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But I will get back with you on that one. But this one, it says they want you to draw these trees in stages. So they've given you stage one. Stage two is three trees and two on top. Stage three is three trees, two, two. So this would be stage four, three down here, two, two, and two. I'm not going to draw trees with this marker. So I'm just using a, mar a line. So now stage five would be three, and then two, 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 and two, so you've got five. They want you to extend that all the way to 10, okay? And then it says, try to write an expression to describe the relationship between the stage number N, so the stage number N, and the number of trees T. All right, so remember an expression is not you're not going to have an answer. You're just going to make an expression. All right. Well, you give your uh, effort at that, and we will see you 
Oh, no, wait, we've got, <laughs> we're not done. <laughs> oh, we've got two more lessons to do. All right, uh, let me move the paper up and we'll continue. All right, so day five is, let's see, uh, here is a balanced hanger. Write in day five. It says here is a balanced hanger. Write an equation. So these four W's is the same as 25. So we're going to write the equation. 4W equals 25. Okay? So that goes down here. 4W equals 25 is your equation. Oops. Equals 25. Not Z. That should be equals. All right. Find the weight of one circle. Do you remember how to do that? This is multiplication. We have to get W, 1W alone. So what we have to do, the opposite of multiplication is division. So we are going to divide both sides by 4 and we will get W by itself, okay? So 25 divided by four, how many fours are in 25? You can look at your multiplication sheet if you need to. Six, six times four is 24. Five take away four is one. All right, we've got a remainder and we have to keep going here. So add a zero and bring it down. How many fours are in 10? Two. Two times four is eight. And then we're gonna subtract this. 10 take away eight is two. We have to add another zero and bring it down. How many fours are in 20? Five. So five times four is 20. All right. So we have to bring up our decimal point, okay, for our um, 6.25. So one of those circles is 6.25, okay? And four of them is 25. All right, so that's what you're going to do here. Uh, write an equation to represent each hanger. So here you're going to have 2x equals 3. That'll be a decimal also. 1.3w equals 2.7. 3y equals 5.1. 2, oh no, I'm sorry, that's not a 2. 1 third z equals 1 half. All right, so do your best with those and we'll move on. Let's see here. I'm going to have to move the paper up now. Would you rather, all right, whichever option you choose, justify your reasoning with mathematics. Work as a, would you rather work as a server at restaurant A or work as a server at restaurant B? All right, so this is, if you work at restaurant A, you get $18 an hour, but no one's allowed to tip you. Meals range from $8 to $25. If you work at restaurant B, you get less per hour, ten fifty an hour, but you'll get tips. And meals range in the same amount, eight to twenty-five dollars. So you're gonna have to decide that and explain why you would pick the restaurant you want. All right. All right, week two, um, day one. It's just one page here, I believe. Well, it goes on to a little bit down there. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, this. It says, select all the equations that describe each situation and find the solution. Kieran's backpack weighs three pounds less than Claire's backpack. Claire's backpack weighs 14 pounds. How much does Kieran's backpack weigh? All right, guys, let's take a look at this. So Kieran's backpack, we're going to say, Kieran, what do I not doing? I don't know why it highlighted that either. Um, don't pay attention to that highlighting. I can't take it. Well, let me see if I can take it away. Nope, it won't go away. I don't know why. Hold on. Nope. 
I don't know. Okay. All right. Don't pay attention to the highlighting. I don't know why it highlighted that. All right. So we're going to say that Kieran's backpack is X. Okay. We don't know how much Kieran's backpack is. We do know that it weighs three pounds less than Claire's backpack. Okay. So we know that. So three less than Claire's. And it tells us how much Claire's backpack weighs. So Kieran's backpack weighs 14, Claire's backpack minus three, okay? So all we have to do is solve that to find out how much Kieran's backpack is. X equals 11, all right? So that was this one, we know that works, but we could do another one, I mean, it, in other words, you take this 11 now and substitute it in for x and see if that works. So 11 plus 3 is what? 14. So this one would also work. Uh, it says select all the equations. Well, let's try this one. 3 times x equals 14. Is that true? 11 times 3 equals 14. 3 times 1 is 3. Oops, 3 times 1 is 3. So no, that one is not right. So that one doesn't fit. And then here, 11 equals 14 divided by 3. Well, I don't think that's going to work either because that won't even go in there evenly. We're going to have a um, decimal, and this is not. Okay, so that does not, 4 is not um, the same as 11. So for this one won't work. Okay, do you see what to do there? So I'm going to read this one to you and then you will um, figure that one out. Each notebook contains 60 sheets of paper. Andre has five notebooks. How many sheets of paper do Andre's notebooks contain? Okay, there's five notebooks, 60 sheets in each one. What operation can you use to find out how many sheets of paper are there all together. All right, I'll let you work on that one. And let me move up just a bit here so I can see what we're doing next. All right, order of operations. Use the digits one, two, five, one, two, three, four, five, and at most one time each, so no more than one time each, place a digit in each box to create an expression with the largest possible value. Okay, so um, you're, you're not going to use all of them, one to five, um, but remember this is an exponent. Remember what to do with exponents. I'll just refresh your memory here. Um, if we say three to the fourth power, Oops, that's supposed to be a small four. Okay, we put down the three four times. Oh my goodness, I do not know what's going on here with my. And then we multiply them. That's what an exponent does. We put the three down four times. Okay, just to remind you. Alrighty. So play around with those numbers in there and see if you can get the largest possible value. 